It's great to be back at Bama Pie with my friend and colleague, Paula Marshall. Paula, I want to thank you for taking the time to be a part of this special uh, DVD feature on the Lamp movie. Thank you, Jim. I'm very honored to be here. You know, a lot of people have heard of Paula Marshall, you know, the international businesswoman, and you do business with Walmart and McDonald's and some of the biggest corporations in the world, and now you've expanded into China. And you're really worldwide in this amazing thing that's happened to you. But tell us, how did you get here? How did you get started? Well, I had, I had a, a, a normal uh, childhood. I was getting ready to go off to college, and I had one of those things happen where, you know, you just have an unexpected turn that you have to make. Um, I actually became pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh, with my daughter who's now 18 and it was very unexpected um, and but honestly one of the best blessings in my life because I left college had my daughter and came to work at Bama and that's mm -hmm. how I started here and you know this uh, company was actually started uh, I guess your grandmother actually uh, got the ball rolling and then your father and then you how does that feel uh, the, the responsibility and passing it down from generation to generation I think as I've grown older, Jim, it's really made a bigger difference. I think maybe 15 years ago, it, it mattered to me, but today it matters even more, especially given what's going on in American business and what's going on in, in the stock market and with public companies and private companies selling out all over the place. I, I want to keep our company private and I want to keep it a family. You know, most people, if they had the choice like uh, our couple did in in the lamp movie and they have the choice of three wishes more people pick money than anything else that's the number one thing in our society people think about and uh, why do you think that is well I think it's because our society has been so geared to individual perfectionism uh, the rugged individual you know our our forefathers of America were very rugged people right. and and to some degree I think had been kept down or in their minds maybe put down by an, an institution or a government or you know too heavily taxed or whatever it was and I think they built that rugged individualism into our constitution and the freedom and things I think we've run amok though from the standpoint of we became so powerful and people were looking to us after World War II we could make anything in this country and ship it anywhere and it would be better than anyone had in any part of the world now and, and we built these big bureaucracies right. and we sold these companies for billions of dollars and made all these wealthy people and in their I think in people viewing that all that wealth and all that opulence and I want that and I want that well who wouldn't you know mm -hmm. who wouldn't want that who doesn't want a better life but I think we've we've gone over the edge of a cliff somehow that um, it's never enough Right. Nothing is ever enough. And one of the things I talk to people at Bama about all the time is, I can give you a paycheck, but if you don't take care of your health, mm -hmm. you're going to go broke because there's no way I can pay you enough to take care of your health. If you get sick, you're one month in a hospital and you're probably going to have to file for bankruptcy. So there's a lot of things we do like that, Jim, to educate our team members and talk to them about things that a lot of people would say oh you know that's a HIPAA violation or oh that's a regulate regulatory issue you can't talk to somebody like that well if your family that's what you do right you know I've read your story as I know a number of people have and, and will be doing and learn all about you you've been about as poor as anybody yeah and you've been about as rich as anybody how does that change your life what's different and what's the same what a great question. Um, I would say money gives people a false sense of security. Um, I realized I was on the wrong, the wrong path um, when I, you know, my husband filed for divorce um, in, in seven years ago. And I was, I was basically kicked out of my home. And the, mm -hmm. the, the temporary court judge, family court judge, said I was the one that needed to exit. And I left with my kids crying and everyone in the house crying. And I, I realized that I had put my career, making money, I had justified trying to give my kids, you know, put my kids in private school or give them a great big house. And I realized I was spoiling them and ruining them mm -hmm. because I didn't care about them enough to be there with them. It didn't bother me that I was always out or traveling somewhere. And I think for me, I've had to weigh a lot of those. 
where do I put my personal family and where do I put my Bama family? And I've had some trouble, Jim, you know, um, putting those two together. And it's taken me a long time to realize that no matter how much I want to put those two together, they're not together. Mm -hmm. And my kids are my kids, and they may, must be treated special. And my Bama family are my Bama family, and they must be treated special. But they're different. They're different. And your own biological kids need to feel that you care about them, just as much as the company people need to feel that you care about them. So it's always that precarious balance. I feel like I'm, I'm on that, you know, that precipice sometimes that I'm not spending enough time here or not there. It's difficult. But the, the question you asked, I think I've had trouble drawing those lines. And all money has really done for me is really, it's given me some sense of security. Um, but it's a false sense of security. You know, and, and after people think about money and they, they get their wish of money, the second thing most people wish for, and our people did in, in the Lamp movie, uh, is about their family. And you struggled as, as a young lady in finding your place in life. And what, what would you wish or what do you think about your kids now? What, what do you want for them? It's very interesting. I know Steve Forbes is a friend of yours, and I, I love the Forbes family and how they've operated their family foundation. I love Warren Buffett. Um, I love Bill Gates. I love what they say about don't leave your kids too much money that it contaminates them. Right. And I think I've done some of that in this life. I've spoiled my kids because I didn't ever want them to want for anything. And what I've realized as I've gotten older is wanting for something and not being able to have it handed to you is is a character builder and it built my character and I want my kids to work hard and and focus on quality and be good at what they do and educate themselves and learn and 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 be good role model citizens I want them that for them but I haven't always been able to model that for them because they've seen me so like you know running around doing yeah. this Bama thing and it was a little bit hard for them I think at times to make it all make sense um, I think what you know they would say now is that the best thing mom could do for us is is talk to us spend time with us help us know how we could get out of things and not get us out not necessarily get us out of the thing but help us by talking with us and giving us ideas about how we can do better. My dad was driven. Mm -hmm. He was driven. And while I've learned that that is a wonderful way to build things, because when you're that driven, it means you're focused. Right. It means you've got a laser. It's like if somebody puts a laser on that table right there, it's going to be that piece is going to be gone. Because right. you have that much energy that you can bring to something. And my father was a master at that. He was a master, and I watched him do it so many times. He used to say, I'm going to make millions of pies one day. And I would be sitting like Jim is maybe a, a child in the back seat, or mm -hmm. with the, and we were at dinner with people, let's say, and people would look at him <laughs> like he was crazy. Yeah. And I would sort of shank down in the seat, and I would like look at my mom, and later I'd whisper to my mom, does Daddy know people think he's crazy? And she said, Daddy knows people think he's crazy, but he's going to ha do this. And how many pies do you make a day now? 3.5 million. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so even though there were challenges with your father and, and those sorts of things, I mean, nobody in our life uh, is perfect. We, we can't wait to only be impacted by human beings that are only perfect. So everybody uh, teaches us something. Uh, we can learn things we want and, and, and things we don't want from mm -hmm. them. And, and I think that's, uh, you know, the, the, in the final analysis, that, that's good. And, uh, you know, I have interviewed, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of people and uh, a lot of corporate leaders and CEOs and, and movie stars and athletes and politicians and rarely, if ever, have I interviewed anybody that's as honest as you are. Where does that come from? <laughs> I think that comes from my dad. Um, my, my dad was never going to let anybody walk away and not know exactly how he felt. Right. He felt that it was a disservice. Um, he used to call my mom, he used to say, Lala Bell, you're a backstabber. You're a backstabber. And she would, she would laugh and they would have a good laugh over it. But he, because my mother was a nice Southern 
Bell. Her middle name was Bell, Lila right. Bell. And she never wanted to hurt anyone's feelings. Never. Mm -hmm. Now, she was tough as nails, but she would never, like if you owed her some money, Jim, she'd put the brass knuckles on in two seconds and you'd pay her off because right. you didn't want to have this lady in your face. But to say to someone, you know, you're not doing a good job today or you've left a big mess on the floor, why don't you clean it up and then you can go home. My mom didn't do that. She didn't do it with us kids and she didn't do it with my dad. And so he felt like that was an, an ultimate non-gift, right. you know, is to let someone walk away and not know how you really feel. So sometimes I'm too honest to a fault, but you know, people um, appreciate that about me and trust me because they know I'm gonna tell them. So Paula, when it's all said and done and a uh, hundred years from now, all that will matter is what we leave behind. What do you want people to say and think and feel because uh, Paula Marshall was here? One of my other mentors is Stephen Covey and he mm -hmm. wrote a book called First Things First and, and it's one of my favorites other than your books. Um, but he talks about um, writing your own personal mission statement and, right. and to do that you need to pretend like you're at your own funeral mm -hmm. and you're listening to people go up and you know of course they're always crying right Jim because right. they miss you so much. We hope. We hope <laughs> anyway. We hope they're not having too good of a party. Um, but, but I've often, uh, as I've worked on my personal mission statement over the years, I've often wondered you know what would I want people to say about me? And what I really have come down to is I want people to say that every time I interacted with someone, I made them feel special. I want people to, to say that I really cared deeply and it wasn't just put on. Um, I want them to know in their hearts that I do care about them and love them when I say that or I wouldn't say that. And I, I, the last thing I would like is that um, she made things better mm -hmm. when she was around. Well, I'm really excited to get to actually work with you now on a project. Uh, uh, you guys have kind of adopted uh, my book, Ultimate Productivity, and we're using that as ultimate productivity training and workshops here at Bama. Yes. And then it is emerging as a book you and I are doing and that I'm very proud to co-author with you, Real Productivity, because, you know, in business, there's a lot of people that read a book or wrote a book 20 years ago, and they're running around espousing this theory of what they believe to be true. Yes. And uh, the thing I'm excited about working with you is real productivity, because if you're anything, you're real, Paula. And uh, so uh, I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to work with you on that book project and let you know how much it means to me. And uh, and uh, how do you feel adopting all of that into Bama and then being able to share part of your Bama culture and the things you've learned here with other companies and people around the world? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Jim, you and I have talked about this many times, and the thing I appreciate so much about your message exactly at this point in time where Bama is is because um, your, your message to us is you're here by choice. Mm -hmm. You're not a victim. Right. And I mean, my goodness, Jim, it, it, you know, in my, in my work around here, you know, I've gone from people helping people be successful to continuous improvement to, um, you know, doing Six Sigma, which is more of a technical type thing, to back to more courageous conversations and let's, you know, let's have this talk. And boy, bringing it home, babe, I mean, yeah. bringing it home, like, look, you're not a victim here. You're here because you're choosing to get up and come to Bama every right. single day. Right. So let's make a difference here. And I love that. I love that. To me, that is a message that hits home to every single person, not only in this company, but in every company in America and the mm -hmm. world. We are so victim mentality right now in the United States. If we don't get this message, Jim, right. we're really in trouble. Well, I want to thank you for being honest with us here and uh, thank you for your leadership and uh, and your friendship more than anything thank you jim i truly do love you you really are a wonderful person and we are blessed to have you on this entire planet thank you